Hello everybody, welcome back to Art and Outdoor Life here with John. So, here I have 140 pound paper, watercolor paper, 9 by 12, and I'm going to go over a few things, okay? So, the back side, I'm going to just wet the back side. Never done this before, never. Just a little bit, okay? Never done this. So, <clears throat> some people do it. I've never done it. This is the back side. It was a straight paper when I started out, okay? Flat. Look at the buckle. I don't know if you could see that. Look at the buckle. Okay. So, I'm going to put it here on my paint board. And I'm going to wet the front part like I usually do. Okay, just just evenly and nothing dramatic. I'm not like putting tons of paper or tons of water on it. Even though these hake brushes do hold a lot of water. Um, a lot of water. Anyways, I'm just filling in the grain basically. On this this is not 300 pound it's not 90 pound or whatever um, it's simply 140 pound paper okay so when I flipped it over it's sticking to my paint board and my paint board is on oh, about a good 45 degree angle about so I'm gonna let this dry Oh, what I'm going to do here is going to be very simple. It's, it's, something, it's a test for me, but I want to demonstrate a few things, okay? Um, I want to show you, excuse me, I want to show you why these brushes have been a pain in the butt for me. Liner brushes, rigger brushes, signature brushes, whatever you call them, they've been a pain in the butt for me. Okay, so I'm back, everybody. Okay, so I'm looking at these little rascals. Okay, this is more like a round brush with a nice tip. These actually do not have numbers on them. Okay. But these are all considered riggers, liners, signatures, whatever. Okay, this little brush here is uh, a number five. Okay. And this one here, let's see if I can read this. This is a number four. This is a number four. And over here, these came in a set. It says uh, Mastra on it. Number six. Number six. Here's a number two. And this one is a number eight. So this one here is the... The biggest one I have. Okay. So, I'm going to give these guys a little run for their money and see what and why. Because there have been painters, I've been watching this. Well, I watched it today. I'm being honest. Who say, there are professional painters who say that don't ever... You should never go by the numbers of these because every uh, manufacturer, every company, uh, the, their number of the rigor liner brushes do not match up to others all the time. Okay. These have been giving me problems for a lot of reasons, and a lot of it is my touch. A lot of it, it has to do with uh, um, keeping enough paint on it for a long time. And also, uh, 
you know, just a variety of reasons. To me, these are my, this is my own personal thing. These are my frustrating brushes. Okay. So, obviously, I'm not going to dip it in this here because that's way too wet, right? So, I have uh, ultramarine blue here. I got some green here. I got some burnt sienna here. I have some white over here. So, the way they say to use these is to, first of all, you don't never mix them. It's to dip them in some water like that. Okay. Just a little bit like that. And then what you want to do is you want to, okay, we'll go with this one. You want to curl it like that. Okay. Apparently these brushes from the bristle down to the point is supposed to keep going and going. Well, I've never experienced that like a like a uh, calligraphy pen okay so they say to go ahead and go ahead swirl it around in some paint you know that's not too thick where it ain't runny okay and then they say to just tup, touch the tip of it and you're all set to go so let's see how this works okay so um on this tree Okay, this is all one pigment there. Hey, I kind of like that. That's not bad. Now, this is dry. This is not wet on wet. Okay, so let's try a different one. Um, let's go with this one here. Uh, it don't have a number on it, but it's pretty white, pretty thick. So... Let's go ahead and swirl it around. Say swirl the whole, all, all the bristles, all the way up to the top. And then just go ahead and touch the tip. It should be ready to go. So this is a way thicker by looking at it. So let's try it over here. Let's see if I can come up over here. Okay, now... It's coming through thicker, but with not as much pigment. So let's try it again. I mean, that's covered. And I just barely touch it like that. And there's, you can see part of the paint sticking to the top. Okay, let's try it again. Let's try it over here. Okay. Hey, that ain't too bad. This is a thicker brush. So you start out like that and with the lighter touch, you just kind of let it go up, right? But uh, it's all in the touch. They say more control, you know, the further your hand is down here. So let's try it again. This is a, a very thick brush almost like a squirrel brush right okay hey I, I like that but you see now these are it's personal with me like that stroke there that's because i put more pressure on it now in the back you don't have as much control so you flick it like that but because this is a thicker brush i'm getting the wider very wider uh, brush stroke on that. This is a number eight. So if this is a number eight, I don't, this is more like a round brush. So here's a number eight. Let's try number eight real quick. Okay. Completely. Well, not completely. Let's do the complete thing. Okay. This is a number eight. Okay. So I just barely touch it on my palette where there's nothing there. Let's see what this does. Hey, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. Number eight. Let's try it over here. Let's see. Let's 
it's not holding as much water and I'm putting a lot of pressure on that so let's see let's go down to let's see what I got here I want to go to my thinnest brush here's a number two number two number two so I'm gonna get all of that and remember the paint right here that I'm using is not runny it's wet but it's not running down so I completely covered it and then just barely touched the tip kind of like if you're using a calligraphy pen you touch the tip to get the paint to come forward like that okay so let's see if I can try it here let's see what it very okay up front like this And this is a very skinny one, right? Okay, now let's see if I can get it, uh, let's see from here, let's see what it looks like from here. But if you see, I, I put more pressure on it toward the end, right? So it's in the touch. Like that, fling it. But look at, it's losing a lot of paint. These are supposed to hold a lot of paint. But then I was looking at some some well-known artists. They were like, they were saying flat out, uh, these do not hold a lot of paint. Well, other artists are like going all over and they're swirling in one stroke. So, now let's try this, okay? I'm going to wet this. And I'm going to dry it off. And by the way, uh, in regards to uh, the paper and everything, I did not move any of these here, any of the tape. So after wetting the back and the front and letting it dry, some of it still wet a little bit. Uh, it took about 10, about 10 minutes, literally 10 minutes. Um, so... It hasn't really buckled at all, but it did when I hit that back part. Usually when I when I wet the front, it don't buckle like that, but the back, oh Lord. Okay, so with some white here. Okay, let's see if we can do this, okay. Like a little lightning strikes. Okay. How long is it? Oh, wow. See, look it. I put more pressure on. I thought the paint was over with. Like, pretty much gone. And look at that. Okay. So, this is a good experiment for you. If you're, if you're getting frustrated with this, like I, I've been. Okay, so I put it in some Prussian blue here and just very, rolled it all around in Prussian blue, just barely touched the tip. Now let's see about these boats, okay. Very fine, right? Okay, let's see. And, oh, look at that. This is a number, what's it say? This is a number two on a nine by 12 piece of paper. But look at how big that got. That got really big because I pushed in too much. Okay. So let's try it over here. Barely touching it. Now, it is, see, and I have the tendency to want to push it when it runs out of paint. Okay. I have that tendency to want to push it when, it when I feel like it's running out of paper or paint. Okay. So now, let's look at this. I also was looking at this, too. Okay, we're going to use the smallest one here on, on these right here. Okay. So I'm going to use green this time. I'm going to use green. 
again the the paint here is not dripping just like that and just like over here yeah i know these fell over but put it like that just touch the tip a little bit i guess you could you could take a paper towel and do that look at that okay so over here let's see if we can get some grass now i like using fan brushes for grass and my hake brush so you can flick it but look at okay the paint is not exactly uh mm, consistent is a good word right so i have a lot of paint on there there we go now if if, if your hand is steady and you got a very long brush none of, none of these actually are long none of these bristles are actually long of course these are cheap so that works very good i like that i like that here's another thing i was uh they were saying and with this i'm going to use green again um i wiped it off here just dab it a little bit and touch the top. And they were talking about doing this. So let's try this. Sideways, right? So you can create tree effects. And then you have to go in again. You got to roll it all the way around. Hit the tip if you want. And okay, and I'm turning this, and as I'm going, I'm bringing, I'm dragging paint, and I'm going like that. This is just a test run for me, and if you're interested in this, I, I hope it's a test run for you. Let's try creating some grass effects here. Let's see. Hey, that's not bad that's not bad at all especially if you're on small paper yeah that's a lot there let's see i'm using the whole side and i'm just basic and i'm using all of this brush and i'm just scrolling up like that okay so let's see Hey, those are nice effects. Yeah, I mean that there's a lot. Of, I'm using all the paint there sideways, completely sideways. But, and this is a number two on, di on this brand. So how, how, how far will it go? Let me try it again. It's all covered. Just a tip. Let me try that again. All covered. Just dip the tip. And let's see. Hey, that's pretty good. And this is uh, 140 pound. So let's see how far this one goes. Hey, that's pretty good. And if you notice, it got thicker up here and it's because I was pushing down because I thought the paint was running out and it actually wasn't running out okay so with some ultramarine blue here I want to make sure the whole thing is the whole tip is covered but you also want to make sure that you touch the tip now let's see what we can do here. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do anymore. So I'm just gonna like rigger these boats. My understanding is that's why they call them rigger brushes because so many people used them for like boats and stuff like that. Sails and uh, 
some people call them signature brushes because you can sign your name. Some people sign their names with them. And uh, so these these brushes, they, they could be kind of flaky. I, I don't know. Like this right here. It's going back and forth like that. Okay, I mean that pretty much took the paint out. This is all, uh, this is all dried. So I'm using everything on the dry. Um, after I wetted both sides of the paper, which I've never done. So I encourage you, and I'm going to be working on this um, because it's something that I've really been. It's been frustrating me forever. I mean, since I started painting, which has only been a year and a half. So, you know, give me a break on that, please. You know, like, okay, so. It's all in the touch. And I would suggest doing what I'm getting ready to do is I'm going to start practicing. Uh... So for every piece of paper that you have that you've painted on, every single sheet that you have painted on and you don't like, take a rigger brush, a liner brush. Take a rigger and a liner brush and practice on it. If you're, if you're not any good with these, practice on them. Um, they all look different. Now, all of these that I have, none of them have the very long uh, brushes that I see everywhere else. And actually, these came from Amazon. Um, and then I have some that came with a complete artist uh, kit. Okay. But practice on it. I just wanted to give you guys an example, uh, kind of show you a little bit about, here. here's a number six brush. So number six would be like, like that. But these are so touchy, they're very touchy. And then you can like, use the sides, which I, I, I never thought about before using the sides like that. I'm so used to using other brushes. Look at that. But you don't want to mix these. You don't want to use these for mixing. Okay, I know this has been very long, and this is the first time I ever tried this. And I wanted to do it in a video because I, I do that for people. I, I just come in here and I hit record and I go for it. That's what I do. I, I don't BS anybody. Uh, no reason for that. All right. Until next time, I want to wish you guys a good day, a good evening, and a, a good morning no matter where you are. No matter where you are. Try this. Try this. I'm going to be working on this for for a very long time, starting right now, today. And uh, because I could never get these right. I've always heard, just flick it, just flick them, flick them. And there's a lot more to flicking these brushes. And I only found out today, and I've been at this for a year and a half. All right, peace and love. And if you like my videos, please look at them. And if you like them, please, uh, consider subscribing. I appreciate it. And thank you. Sincerely yours, John.